Oh, yeah. On this episode. This is going to be challenging. It's a very sensitive area. It's what basically is holding all of the weight of that dog. Ooh, you tried to go down to the bone. We need to make sure that we can get that paw pad back together. This is probably going to be messy. We noticed he was peeing blood. At this point, I'm worried about a lot of things. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> this is concerning to see. Naturally, we want to figure out where this bleeding is coming from and fix it. But first... Oh my goodness. Yeah, a lot of the fluid in that wow. belly. Good, good, Katie. Can't believe how much is coming out. It just keeps pouring out more and more and more. We can't work out what's going on. Hi, Rob. Hey, Amy. Look at this. Look at the... Oh my goodness. Just, just in New South Wales, Rob and vet nurse Anne are urgently assessing 13 and a half year old cat, Katie. Go, come on, come on, Katie. The much loved ragdoll was brought in by distressed owner Melissa. I've got a cat called Katie and she's, her abdomen's growing. We don't know what's wrong with her. So she's a big part of the family and I want them to do everything possible to save her. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and a lot of the fluid in that wow. belly. Have we run any bloods yet or done any yeah, ultrasounds? Yeah, the bloods. Bloods are normal. I haven't done ultrasounds yet. I look at this enlarged abdomen and I'm worried about straight away heart problems, very likely. Could be cancer. It could be organ function that's failing her. Or it could be some sort of bad virus. It's baffled me and I really want Chris to have a good look. Mm -hmm. He'll be able to tell us, I hope, with ultrasonography. So I want a specialist to be able to look for the real finer details that I could miss as a general practitioner. Cool. Okay, so we're doing the heart ultrasound. Rob's called in ultrasound specialist Chris, hoping the images will provide more clues about the baffling buildup of fluid. One possible cause is heart disease first, so we're starting with a quick look at the heart and see what that is here. Yep. That looks to be fine. So Chris is looking at the heart and looking at the aorta and all the major vessels. There's nothing there, it's all normal. Scanning the abdomen, it's all normal. So this is a bit of a tricky one. It's not going to be as simple as one test will give us one answer. We can't work out what's going on. Yeah, we're in trouble here. We'll pop him on this chair. Okay. Looking really cute. Hi. In Sydney's west, it's another busy shift at the small animal specialist hospital. He's trying to get up. He's Don't really sweet. get up. As one patient gets settled, another arrives that needs Mara's immediate attention. <gasps> oh my God, look at you! Oh yeah, good girl. Hello, hi. I've got sweet little Nova here. Cutest little staffy that I've seen in a while. Oh no! How are you? Are you hungry? Poor Nova came in because the owners came home and found that she had a wound on her foot and was hanging on by a thread. So they wrapped it up to try and make sure that it wasn't going to bleed all over everything, and they made their way in here. Oh my god, and you've got bling too. Well, let's make sure everything else is okay, and then we look at your foot, okay? Mm. I love that she comes with her name on her. It makes it much easier. But, oh no, I was like, did you smell Are you Nova? <laughs> we love Nova. Your heart and lungs sound very good. All right, you ready? We're going to do the big reveal now. Can I have your scissors? Thank you. Okay, prepare yourself. They did a very nice job covering this up. We just want to get this off without hurting you. Oh, you sure did cut that. It's a flap. Can I look? Can I look a little better? Oh yeah. How did you do that? You tried to actually rip your pad off. You poor little thing. That can't feel very good. The wound is not good. That paw pad is not hanging on by a thread, but it's definitely trying to come off the foot. So there is some significant damage that I'm going to have to work on. So I think, my friend, you're going to probably have to be asleep for me to get a really good look at this. All right, well, we will do just a nice little temporary bandage just to protect things until we can get stuff going for you. 
You were the bravest little friend. Because the injury is so painful, Nova will need a general anaesthetic for Mara to get a close look at the badly ripped paw. All right. So brave. Do you want to go back down on the ground? Oh my God. <laughs> She's solid. You're so solid. She keeps flattening down. Come on, Nova. You keep flattening down like a badger. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Despite her injury, it seems Nova's not happy she is missing out on her daily exercise. <laughs> Poor Nova was so excited because the owners put the harness on her and she's like, yes, it's my evening walk. Life is great. Denied. Alas, <laughs> she gets to come to me instead. You can do a walk tomorrow. Don't hate us, we do this to everyone. A lot of fluid, isn't it? In Outer Sydney, Rob is still baffled by the massive buildup of fluid in ragdoll cat Katie's abdomen. Yeah, this is going to be a frustrating one because it leaves us with a little bit of an open diagnosis. Yep. With the ultrasound results inconclusive. More investigation needs to be done. So we'll get some fluid out today and send it off to the laboratory. We're going to take fluid out of the abdomen and send it to a pathologist who will look at it and find out are there cells there that might give us an indicator, like cancer cells? Come on, Katie. Say thank you. With the sample heading to the pathologist, Rob's now going to drain as much fluid as possible to make Katie more comfortable. Some people like to sedate them at this stage. Right at the moment, I don't want to take the risk. She's already compromised with that diaphragm with the amount of fluid there. So if she lets me, I will just take the fluid out without any tranquilization. Good girl, Katie. Good girl, Katie. Ah, oh, sweetie. Yeah. Yeah, You've been so good. You've been so good. Come on. You feel better. Wow. Oh, I can't believe how much is coming out. It just keeps pouring out more and more and more. 700 mils wow. and counting. Wow. You can see her tummy's come down a lot. That'll do. We haven't done it all, but that'll make you comfortable. We're up to 800 mils, but she's getting a little bit uncomfortable with everything, so we'll stop now. I'm going to send her home with Melissa. We'll get the results back of pathology, and then we've got to decide on the next step. Mm, good good okay. So brave. Oh, who's the bravest? In Western Sydney, Emergency vet Mara and nurse Jess are giving one-year-old Staffy Nova a general anaesthetic so they can find out how badly she's injured her front paw. Okay, time to see how this looks. Ooh, this is gonna be challenging. Okay, so we've got this whole half of the pad. She tried to cut it right off. She sliced along the lateral aspect of her fourth digit. And I am not sure if I'm gonna get this flap of skin to attach really easily. A lot of times when I see a wound, it's because the dog or cat has gotten their foot caught on something nice and sharp, like a piece of glass, a piece of metal. Those are the best ones because it's a nice, simple, smooth line that I just have to stitch together and life is good. Wow, this is gonna be quite a job. Okay, baby. Nova decided that she wanted to do something special and tear her paw pad off. I don't know if she got it stuck on a nail or what. Ooh, you tried to go down to the bone. <sighs> Monkey, you really did a job on yourself. All right, you happy to clip? I can oh, hold yeah. the leg for you if you'd I like. Mara faces a huge challenge, trying to somehow repair the shocking injury. We know that if people do a lot of damage to their heel, they may never actually fully recover from that type of injury. And I don't know if I would be able to stick an entire paw pad back on and actually have it be viable. You taking any breaths, darling? Adding to Mara's concern, Nova isn't breathing normally under anesthetic. 
Blood pressure's good. Our friend is just still very deeply asleep and so not taking very many breaths on her own. Muy bien, Teo. In Miami, Edward's first patient is arriving, fluffy three-year-old Golden Doodle Teo. Hi, is Dr. Edward in? Yes, he is. Go ahead and have a seat. I'll call him for you, okay? Thank you. A short time ago on a walk, owners Tadeo and Carson suddenly became alarmed. I'm a little worried. This is the first time it's happened and it happened randomly. She noticed that his pee color was a little different. I'm hoping it's not something that he ate and has some sort of cuts inside that could be potentially lead to any other things other than the blood. Hey, good afternoon. How's it hey, going? How are you, good to see you. All right, you good? Yep. All right. Hey, buddy. How you doing? I love your haircut, mate. Hey? <laughs> You're more well groomed than I am, I'll tell you that much. So, what's he here for today? Um, we noticed he was peeing like a really dark brown color, and we're worried there's blood coming through his pee, so. All right. Alrighty, let's get him checked out. Perfect. Right through here. LinkedIn. This is naturally concerning because what it could mean is severe inflammation or potentially bleeding. I know, right? It's hot, hey? It's Miami. The first thing we're going to do for Teo is to give him a head-to-toe check over. Lungs are nice and clear. We're going to try and find clues as to what exactly could be going on. More importantly, how can we fix him? A little bit of inflammation going on there. He Nothing major. He does get any infections. Probably something like a skin allergy, you know. Okay. Wouldn't be related to the whole urine issue we're dealing with right now. Okay. And I can see that on, on his fur there's like this sort of brown tinged urine. He's otherwise been totally fine, so that would suggest the problem is very much limited to just the urinary bladder. It, that's a good thing. You know, we we want to have something like cystitis, which is an inflammation of the bladder. That's probably one of the, the best causes you can have for blood in the urine. One of the other things I have in mind here is because we are an entire male, so we're, we're not neutered, uh, that can predispose to prostatic disease. So the prostate, it can be inflamed, it can be uh, infected. And these things can cause similar symptoms, uh, specifically, you know, bleeding into the, the bladder itself. First things first, let's get a urine sample. Let's see if there's bacteria, let's see if there's any kind of crystals, any clues as to, you know, what is actually causing this. And then we might also want to have a look at the abdomen itself, specifically the, the bladder, the kidneys and the prostate. And we can do that really well with an, an x-ray. Okay. So I think that's the most sensible course of action for him. I'm a little worried about the fact that he's like not neutered because it poses a lot more possibility for risk. So hopefully it's just a urinary tract infection and not something like more serious. Best case scenario stuff, all we see is just the bladder has perhaps got some bacteria and in which case we just treat with antibiotics and you know we'll, we'll be right as rain. But of course if we see anything else, if we see like maybe the prostate's a little bit more abnormal then we can take a closer look and you know. Do what's best for him. Okay. Sorry. Sounds good, doctor. Hopefully it's something simple. This is probably going to be messy. I'm just going to do buried sutures as well as surface sutures. At SASH in Western Sydney, Mara is about to start trying to sew up Nova's severely lacerated paw. Still hasn't taken a breath on her own that I've seen. So oh, she just, just did a little one. Okay, fabulous. You're breathing now on our own. Everything is good. Blood pressure is good. Perfect. Nova's erratic breathing has now stabilized and Mara can now start tackling the complicated injury. Okay, you gotta go. Thank you. All right, time for some beautiful chunky stitches. The paw pad, it's a very sensitive area. It's what basically is holding all of the weight of that dog when she steps on it. And so we need to make sure that we can get that paw pad back together. I think I'm gonna start with the pad itself first, and then I'll move on to the wound here around the toe. I am basically having to change the location of every stitch that I make because it's like putting together kind of a puzzle, but it's a damaged puzzle. So you're often placing stitches almost blind and then you're just kind of crossing your fingers and hoping that it will work.
Every stitch is a challenge, so Jess must hold the little dog's leg perfectly still. My hands are okay, but my legs are starting to feel a bit stuck in the same spot. <laughs> if the wound was positioned differently, then we could sling it up and not have the nurse hold it. But because it's in an awkward position, it's just better to do it this way. It's just trying to keep it as steady as possible for Mara. Thank you. But despite the difficulties and her earlier uncertainties, I think I'll be able to get most of this back together okay. Mara is now confident she'll be able to get Nova back on her feet again. All four of them. One more, and then we're done. Easy. At first, I mean, it's, it's a pretty big injury. It kind of punches you in the face, and you would think, I might be here forever trying to get this put back together. So, good news, we can have a functioning paw pad in the end. All right, done. It's not the most beautiful of things. It's like an angry porcupine, but it will work. Considering how ugly it was, this is a whole lot better. The real test will be if Nova is able to walk on the repaired foot once she regains consciousness. Can turn the ISO I'm off now? Yeah, turn the ISO off so she can start waking up. That's great. Okay. In Sydney, it's time for Katie's worried owner, Melissa, to find out the test results on the fluid that was drained out of the 13-year-old ragdoll's abdomen. The last few days have been quite tough, not knowing actually what's wrong and having a diagnosis. You know, I'll do anything for Katie. Once I know, at least we can come up with a plan. Come on, Katie. I've got a result on that fluid that was sent to the laboratory, and it's got some cells in it which they don't like. They don't know what the cells are yet. The pathology gets us a little bit closer, yeah. um, but doesn't give us a diagnosis. Yeah. I was hoping it would. It says there are a, a small number of cells which are atypical. What that means is they could be cancerous. Okay. I think it's time that we do surgery, yeah. have a look inside once and for all so we can get a diagnosis yeah. and then a plan for the future for her, okay. however long that may be. Yeah. as soon as possible. I will. Straight after surgery, I'll give you a call now. Yeah. They'll need a diagnosis so I can work out a treatment plan long term for this cat. Okay. I hope I don't see a lot of cancer. That's my big worry. Another suction. We're going to get quite a bit of fluid out, I'd say, on this. So I've got to get all the fluid out before we can really see anything. Seriously, you wonder how this can be. 48 hours ago, we removed a litre of fluid, and now we're filling up the suction machine all over again. Are you happy for me to empty that? Yes, please. No, empty it. That lining there on the abdominal muscle is called the peritoneum, and it's not a healthy lining. This is all very, very wrong. Lesser omentum and it looks like it's almost being attacked by something. The omentum is a, a lacy type of material, often referred to as the plumber. If there's any leakage anywhere, it'll go there and block the leakage up. It's like a cobble road. Truth is, in my heart of hearts, I think this is going to be a cancer. Okay, we've got the sample. Let's sew up and get out of here. Hey Melissa, so she's okay, I'm still, I'm still operating on her. Yep. We did find some abnormalities. I can't get them all out, yep. but I can get enough to get a specimen to send to pathology. I've probably... Do you think it's cancer? Yes, I do. Yeah, okay. I do. I, I, I hope not, but I, yep. I do feel that's what we're going to get. My job will be to keep her happy for as long as possible. We will go through this together. Kid, we'll just okay. do a step at a time. Okay then, thank you so much. All right, Melissa, no worries, all the best. So we will try and keep them as 
long as possible together. We're going to try and drain fluid. If it comes back again, we'll put it on some medication to try and stop the buildup of fluid and just keep it pain-free, happy for as long as possible. That's a good girl, Katie. I don't want the toes exposed because I want everything to be kept as close together as possible. In Western Sydney, Mara and Jess have finished surgery to repair a badly cut front paw on one-year-old Staffy Nova. Any tension is going to start to make the sutures pull through the skin. No. Yeah, we don't want to have that. That hurts. But Mara can't be sure how successful the operation has been until Nova wakes up and begins walking. I hope she can tap dance. Soft shoe instead of regular tap. All right, baby. We are all done with you, Nova. It's time for you to wake up. No more ouchy foot, hopefully. We need to make sure that we have a functioning paw pad, because otherwise Nova's going to be in pain for the rest of the time that she's trying to walk. Wakey, wakey. Time for eggs and bakey. Hello. Do I need to wake up enough? <laughs> yes, can you wake up enough for us? If you wake up a little bit more, you can go on a walk. Hi. <coughs> Nova is slowly regaining consciousness. Hey, Bubba. Hi. Hi, cutie. With Mara keeping a close watch of Nova, uh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. in no time at all, brave Nova is up and walking comfortably on all four legs. Oh, that looks nice and normal, Pa. Good job. You are a good girl, Miss Nova. I'm very happy with that. Uh, and then we're just going to hold on to her through the night to make sure that her pain is well controlled, that she's walking comfortably, that everything's looking good, and then she's going to get to go home. And hopefully, she'll be comfortable for the remaining time for her to heal. Oh, Miss Nova, you are a good girl. First things first, let's get a urine sample. Let's see if there's bacteria, let's see if there's any kind of crystals, any clues as to you know what is actually causing this. In Miami, Edward needs to urgently find out why three-year-old Teo has blood in his urine. Do you want me to take the front? Do you want me to take the whole thing? The size of Teo does make it a bit of a challenge, especially when we're trying to you know lift him up onto a table. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? He's a gentle giant, don't get me wrong, but he weighs half a ton, so, you know, you got to lift with your back. And a boy. Right now, we're getting ready to get the urine sample, and we're going to get the sample using this needle, and we're going to guide this needle into the bladder using this ultrasound. So of course this is concerning to see it. Normally what we should expect is for the urine to be normal in colour, yellow, but what we have here it's distinctly red. So this does reflect quite a lot of inflammation going on with the bladder itself. So naturally we want to figure out where this bleeding is coming from and, and fix it. Let's get him over the x-ray. I got him. There we go. Good boy. The next steps for Tao is to get imaging done. Oof. We want to pinpoint the cause and we don't want to go into this blindly. We want to find a specific thing we can treat. One, two, two three. Oh, good boy. So what we're going to do is get left or right lateral and VD. At this point, I'm worried about a lot of things. The fact that he hasn't been neutered does increase the risk of certain things like prostate problems. Aside from that, it's even possible we might be dealing with a bladder cancer. I mean, there's a lot of inflammation or bleeding going on, so we need to figure out what's going on here. All right, let's have a look at Tio's x-rays. Right now, I'm looking for any evidence of bladder stones or a suggestion that the prostate might be affected. Fortunately for Tio, there's no evidence of stones. This is good news. This is great. I mean, it's what we're hoping for. Of course, the last thing we want to do for poor Tio is, is surgery. So I'm pleased to say this is looking more of a medical case. And that's going to be the next step is to, to look at the urine to see what kind of clues we can get there, along with a blood sample. And then we'll have a complete 
clinical picture of TR and, and more importantly, what we can do to, to get him feeling better. Good boy, in you go. Good boy. Well done. In Sydney, an anxious Melissa has arrived back at Rob's practice to collect her beloved ragdoll, Katie. The good thing for me now is that I can reunite Melissa and Katie, and uh, Katie can go home and have some quality time at home. <laughs> yeah, Katie. Here you go, to your mummy. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Hello. It's really great to see Katie again. Just missed her all day and worried about her. A bit devastated that it could be cancer, but at least we know now we can treat her. Yes, we if you look at the tummy, yeah. it's down at the moment because we've been inside there oh. and got rid of all her fluid for now. We're able to get a sufficiently large portion yep. to send off to pathology okay. so we can see what we're dealing with. Okay. I'm hoping that with palliative care, we'll be able to help her if I'm right that it is cancer. I'm hoping I'll be proven wrong by histopathology. Very confident this will give us a final diagnosis and then a treatment plan from here. Okay. I'll go and get her crate so she can go home. Okay, thank you. I'm glad I'm taking her home. <laughs> I just, uh, just have to wait and see what it comes back as and treat her for it and make her comfortable for the day she has. Could be months, years, don't know. <laughs> Good boy, Tio. Good boy, look at that. Nice. In Miami, Edward is carrying out a series of tests to try to find out why Teo has suddenly started urinating blood. Good boy, matey, good boy. Owners Tadeo and Carson are nervously waiting for news of their beloved boy. He's probably feeling a little bit anxious. He is a little bit of an anxious boy, like when he's in places that he doesn't know around people that he's not very familiar with. Uh, I'm hoping it's just a urinary tract infection, like that's simple to handle and not something more serious, like a cancer or anything like that. Okay, blood's looking good. Uh, there's no real abnormality seen on the blood work, which is fantastic. The kidneys are good. We want to see that, especially in cases of such severe inflammation. When we're looking at the urinalysis, there is bacteria present. So this is looking consistent with bacterial cystitis or a urinary tract infection. Overall, this is fantastic. I'm pleased to say T.O. shouldn't need anything more than just a course of antibiotics. So T.O. can get back to normal. Come on, buddy. Good boy this way. Good boy. You know the way. He's on it. Today and Carson are going to be relieved. I mean, you know, when they came in, you can you can see it on their face. I can't wait to give them the good news. Here he is. <laughs> si. He's ready. Si, mi gordo. He wants to leave. <laughs> good boy. Hey, there we go. Muy bien. Alrighty, so things are looking good. The only concern I have is the amount of inflammation and. I've got a urine sample here to show you guys. It's pretty much what you saw earlier. Yeah, the you know, brown. That, that degree of inflammation. That brown is, is red blood cells that have oxidized and, and so that's why we're seeing the color we're seeing. So again, the question is why is there so much inflammation? We were worried about things like, is there a prostate problem? Are there bladder stones? Really pleased to say that everything so far is in line with just a, a bacterial infection which is kind of the best thing we could hope for yeah. in terms of you know, what could be causing this amount of inflammation. We're going to get him on a really good antibiotic for, for problems of this nature. We're going to get him some pain relief as well to help alleviate that kind of discomfort he gets from all that inflammation. And that's pretty much it. I'm just glad that it's not something more serious. Yeah, exactly. I'm happy. happy is just an infection. Exactly, in exactly. Quotes. More importantly, let's get this poor guy home so he can yeah, get some rest. He's huh? probably tired. See you, buddy. Dile chao, dile gracias. Muy bien. Yeah, I'm feeling very relieved that the doctor told us that he only has an infection and nothing, something more serious with uh, anything else, so. Muy bien, Teo. Dr. Edwards was great. He walked us through everything, you know, what they were gonna do, what the possibilities could be of what uh, Teo had. So, I'm really glad that he was here to help. Thank you. Yes.
so excited. I can't wait. In Melbourne, Danny's on the road today, meeting with a friend who has a special relationship with animals. Down, please. Charlotte, you're a good pig. Lauren trains animals to perform in movies and TV shows. You do the big one. Hey Lauren, how are you? Hi, Danny, I'm good, how are you? you? Yeah, good thanks. That's this is good. our little patient today. Jeez, you are so cute, <laughs> darling. Lauren's called Danny because one of her on-screen stars, Larry, has developed a problem with his eye. So aside from the eyes, is there any other concerns? I was just looking at his nails thinking that they need to be done. Oh, do they? Yeah. Oh, I think we can get that sorted. Well, let's go have a little look at your mate, Great. hey? So if you look at the conjunctiva under there, it's a little bit inflamed. So there's no squinting or anything going on. I think for now, um, we could just try some antihistamine eye drops to okay. see if that settles it down. But if not, we'd want to do some little tests on the eye just to see if there's anything else going on with them. Okay, no worries. Okay. All right, let's get those nails, sweetie pie. Sorry, yes, mm. we've got to. <laughs> Has Larry been in any films lately? Yeah, he just finished on a big one last week. He was oh, on it for a, for a few weeks, actually. Superstar. Yeah. All right, I think your nails are all done there, mate. Yay! Yay. Ah, all done. <laughs> all done. You were very good. As well as starring in movies, Lauren's menagerie of animal actors also play another important new role. Oh, there we go. Good job. Lauren recently started an animal therapy program for special needs children and has invited Danny to join in. I've heard so much about them, so I'm really excited. Other way, Ross. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, darlings. They say never work with animals or children. They couldn't be more wrong. Yay! Good job, and Chandler. <laughs> How do you find the animals make you feel when Happy. you're around them? Yeah? And my heart is full of wealth for them. Oh, that's a lovely thing to say. Something about animals, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Are you ready for Romulus? Yeah. Hello. Hello. He's your friend. Oh, that's the sweetest thing in the world. Liam's been coming here every week. Not a lot of people would find this a calming activity, but Liam yes. does. What is it that you love about Romulus so much, Liam? He's such a big bird, but he's, yeah. he's so friendly. I think he trusts you too. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. No. <laughs> no. 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 I think he's got his favourite. Oh, good job, Liam. <laughs> Watching Romulus and Liam together, the bond they seem to have and this connection and understanding of each other and the calm that came upon them both, it's truly miraculous. You're number one, Liam. <laughs> the animals, to me, have always created magic, so to then be able to see it go on to these children, there, there are no words. Oh, well done, Tanner. Nice. Woo! <laughs> well done. <laughs> Good job, Danny. Tanny, you are way too quick. This is a lot harder than you make it look. Miss, look! <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and do you have a favourite animal? Probably dogs and reptiles because I love them since childhood, so they've always kind of been there and I've always yeah. loved them. Yeah, yeah, very therapeutic. I, I want to come hang out here every week too. <laughs> Who wouldn't? I know, exactly. Good job, you guys. Well done, both of you. Most of my life is devoted to the care of animals and, and looking after their health and well-being. It really is nice to be reminded that animals truly do have the power to heal us. Thank you so much for such a rewarding day. It was just beautiful. Oh, thank you for coming. The kids loved having you. Pleasure. Oh, I'm gonna get going, little Larry. Let me know how you go with his yeah, eyes. Okay. I will. Absolutely. All Thank right. you. See you later, guys. Bye. bye. <laughs> Say bye. <laughs> One month after Katie's surgery, Rob has devastating news about the much-loved ragdoll cat. Four weeks after the surgery, Katie passed away. Katie was such a beautiful cat and so important to me. Emil loved her so much, but the cancer was really surging inside her abdomen. Mia enjoyed the few more weeks that she had with Katie, but oh, that was really tough. But there's good news for Mara's patient, Nova. 
The brave Staffy has fully recovered from that nasty ripped paw and is back running around normally with all the energy of a lively one-year-old. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.